She's like coughing and sniffing. Uh, you're killing me, this woman. All right. Good morning, County Commissioners. As usual, my name is Brennan Hawks, and I want to address something the chairman asked last month the head of Daymark, Billy West. Chairman Richardson asked Mr. West if he was a private or public entity, so it's got my interest. Mr. West responded that his organization was a not-for-profit private agency. How nice, right? Uh, now, I'm not my angry, but I think Chairman Richardson's question was indirectly aimed at me, because I spoke about free enterprise that night. Well, nonetheless, I wish to educate the chairman and the commissioners and everybody in the room, if they wish, uh, if you don't mind. When I was speaking about cronyism and how government infects and manipulates the pricing mechanism in the marketplace, I thought I was applying it to both private and public agencies. Nonetheless, let me explain. When New River was created, it was a public-private entity. The system, as shown in history, has always been an example of government cronyism, government corruption, or private corruption. Just brief. Now, as for Daymark, it matters not that it's a private or not a private agency. That's completely irrelevant. It still has to respond to government. And in its heavy hand, and manipulation. In a way, it's like saying that, you know, there's a bridge. We don't call it a bridge anymore. You know, we call it a, it's a skyscraper, but we don't call it a skyscraper anymore. We name it some, something crazy like now, we could get into a discussion on health care and how it should be provided. My answer is pretty simple. It's the market. But that's too simple an answer and too long of a discussion for today. Way too long. Uh, if you want to know, I'm available for lunch or after meeting. I can give you a 30-minute lecture about health care in the marketplace. Not that good jazz. I've campaigned for two doctors. Believe you me, I've seen horrendous accounts of uh, health care abuse and stuff like that. <clears throat> but to continue our discussion about New River, I hold in my hand today a book. Now, it's not the book uh, I asked you to read a few months ago, or a month ago, Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. This was the book and the author that inspired Henry Hazlitt to write Economics in One Lesson. The title alone speaks volumes. It destroys graphs, charts, it rethinks political philosophies, economic philosophies, economic theory, rethinks capitalism, and engineers the role of government in everyday lives. The title is simple, but yet we see it every day. And even you, Chairman Richardson, and fellow commissioners, act because of it. The policies you pass, the boards you sit on, all have impact on the citizens of this county and you. But what do the people do when bad policies are made? When institutions go belly up? When taxes are raised? When acts vile to our federal and state constitutions are created? It's a simple answer, really. People act. Human action. It's the one variable in economics we all just completely ignore. We teach it in college. We say that there's a graph and it's a, you know, aggregate demand and all that and blah. But nobody ever puts in human action because it's not a variable that you can put in a mathematical equation. The author Ludwig von Mises stated that, that it is easy to understand what people will do in simple situations. You put a person in a situation, you ask them, Coke or Pepsi? Well, we do not know what people will do in complex situations, in complex economic concerns with their own interests and their own individuality and how they will react. Will they go along? Will they flee? Will they act? Will they rethink? The Coke and Pepsi question, for the Coke and Pepsi question, what happens when someone says, neither? Oh, Dr. Pepper. What if your study isn't prepared for that? What does this have to do with New River and Smoky Mountain? Well, just about everything. It was an institution which was supposed to be the best, simply because government was going to be the watchdog. It was going to be the regulatory agency to watch it. Remember, we've all been taught in you know, elementary, high school, college, that uh, the private sector is just an evil and greedy people. Government is here to protect us from those evil robber barons. Well, the action from the 168 agreement was well-intentioned, and to seek benefit, it had flaws. That being what happens when the institution goes belly up. Well, naturally, in the area of stimulus and bailouts, a taxpayer gets to foot the bill, which was never really actually supposed to happen. Now, I'm not cold hearted. I realize that the people who worked at New River deserve their paychecks. They want the time out, after all. They got the shaft just like they, uh, like they did, and we, the taxpayers, did. If New River was a sole private institution, it would have failed. 
without much loss, but only to those who had invested in it. Remember, capitalism isn't about you know, private profits and socialized losses. It's about private profits and private losses. And we get that term mixed up because we see a lot of corporatism today in our marketplace. We see lobbyists going to D.C. and that's some special favors to drive a small business. We see this and we think it's capitalism. That's completely irrelevant. It's not capitalism. It's corporatism. But yet we've managed to obtain a replacement for doing it. Thing. To me, we're just doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. <clears throat> Putting Daymark in charge was, once again, a well-intentioned idea, no doubt. But as C.S. Lewis once wrote, quote, Of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It would be better to live under robber barons than omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep. His company may at some point be sedated. But those who torment us for our own good will torment us without end, for they do so with approval of their own conscience." Well-intentioned ideas are good from the heart. They always do more harm than good. And we want to act. We want to move. I understand that. To do something for the individual who's lost a job, a home, a car, who's in, who's in debt, in medical bills, or student loans, or what have you. That is what we see. But I think today there are people, not all, there are exceptions, nothing's absolute, who do not feel the pain long enough to get themselves out of that pit. The idea of having New River and Smoky Mountain was a well-intentioned concept, but once again, a failed policy. If I were that more today, I would not, and I could not, bring myself to vote any other way but to guarantee to the public and to the taxpayers of this county and I will no longer be involved with interlocal agreements, 160As or what have you. My concern is for this county and nothing else, as it should be. Thank you very much. Anyone else?